as promised we will be taking lot of classes uh, lab classes in particular so that you have idea of how to uh, uh, enter the clean room what are clean room etiquettes uh, what are various systems and uh, equipment within the clean room uh, additionally we will also show you lot of interfacing modules uh, what does it mean that when you have a sensor or actuator uh, what kind of signal conditioning circuit you can use it so as to finally uh, uh, you know actuate a signal or sensing a signal so uh, the several lab classes would be taken uh, uh, let me start with first lab class and first lab class uh, we will be showing it to you uh, what are the clean room protocols and what are the governing procedures so uh, alakya uh, who is a teaching assistant uh, in my lab she will be uh, showing it to you uh, the the way you need to uh, uh, the protocols that you need to follow when you have to work in a clean room environment uh, so also uh, when you enter clean room right uh, what kind of governing uh, protocols you need to follow what does it mean that you cannot just go in the way uh, just like wearing a shirt and in the clean room you need to wear a gown now when you have to wear a gown you have to wear a gloves you have to wear shoe cover right you have to you have to cover the beard uh, uh, if you are men uh, you have to cover your uh, you know hair right uh, uh, then uh, the, the gloves how to wear the gloves right in which environment to work on uh, gowning there are two types of gowning now one we will show is a class 10000 environment and second we will be showing is a class 1000 environment but uh, we will stick to class 10000 for the first lab class uh, and uh, and and i'll i'll request now to alakia to uh, take the lab class uh, and then if you have any questions you just ask me uh, after the after this particular lecture uh, through NPTEL forum. Thank you. Hello everyone welcome to the course on sensors and actuators. Today let us see how we follow a gowning procedure while we work in a clean room like this. I am sure you are all inquisitive about the course, what goes into the entire module. So, we will be studying about how to fabricate MEMS based biosensors, how to characterize these sensors, the entire fabrication procedure will be taught to you by Professor Hardik and once you get a hands on or just uh, know as to the process flow about fabricating the device, then you know how to characterize them and how it goes into and uh, it goes into a system where there is electronic modules which will be integrated onto the sensors and then the entire system can be characterized, tested and used for the application. So, even before we get into the details about how the micro engineered uh, devices uh, or MEMS based sensors are fabricated, let us see where are they actually fabricated and where are they tested. So, Conventional clean rooms are classified based on ISO standards. So, there is class 1, class 10, class 100, class 1000, class 10,000 clean, clean room and it goes on. So, the, the classification what talks about the classification is the number of particles, the count of particles present per cubic meter is what counts in a clean room. So, when we what we have here in the facility in DESC, the Department of Electronic Systems Engineering in IASC Bangalore is, we have a class 10,000 clean room. So, when we are talking about class 10,000 clean room, so there is approximately, so uh, I insist you could go back and check over the internet the number of particulate counts that are permitted for this class of clean room. Uh, for the given area. So, uh, approximately it should be around 20,000 particles of size greater than 5 micron should be, should, should be limited for the given cubic meter area. So, now that we have understood how clean room has been classified based on the particle size, its count in the given area, how do we maintain such environment? How do we, uh, uh, you know, have such kind of clean room uh, protocols which are to be followed and how to establish uh, a, an, a, an environment to do the process like to fabricate sensors or to even study or characterize these sensors. So, where I am standing today is a class 10,000 clean room and uh, there is a certain protocol which needs to be followed. Uh, 
mainly because you don't want to contaminate. Like I said, there's stringent rules on the particulate count in a clean room. In order to limit this, in order to limit the amount of contamination in a clean room, we follow gowning procedure. So initially you see me having a lab coat. So let's see in sequence what is the gowning procedure which has to be followed even before you enter the clean room and start working or, uh, or you know characterizing or understanding uh, how your devices have to be fabricated or tested. So today let's see the gowning procedure while you work in a clean room environment like this and here I'm talking about a class 10,000 clean room. Let's see how we follow the sequential process of gowning. So initially I have my shoe covers. Initially like you see I have shoe covers on top of my shoes. Even before you enter the room, it is mandatory to wear shoes to the laboratory. So, so that just so that you are protected as well as you don't contaminate just to follow a, a certain hygiene pro a procedure while you in your work environment. It is always suggested to wear shoes that completely covers your feet. One set of once that you see that I have shoes and then on top of it we have shoe covers. So the shoe covers are placed outside the clean room door. Even before you enter you wear them on top of your shoes and then enter the clean room. Now that we've seen how shoe covers are mandatory even before you enter the clean room, let's see what goes next. Next is your lab coat. So now assume I've entered the clean room and then immediately what you see at the entrance are a set of lab coats which are placed. So you can choose based on the size, choose the right lab coat from here, pick up and wear your lab coat. So now I have my shoe covers on and then I have my lab coat. So next, let's see what are the next procedure which are to be followed even before I step uh, towards my workstation. So now I move to the other bench where I wear the hairnet, face mask and gloves. So now at this bench what we see here is face mask and set of gloves. So there are three sets of gloves based you uh, ideally you should choose the size according to what fits you. This so is a small, large and XL. So choose the right size of gloves so that when you are working and you have, you don't have a right size and then that would be difficult for you to handle devices or tweezers or, or uh, you know while you are taking your devices from one station to the other. So it becomes important to choose the right size of gloves. Another important factor when you are talking about gloves is what is the type of gloves you are wearing. So assume I am just doing some characterization, I am at my workstation not handling any chemicals, all I am doing is just a study under the microscope. So in that case I prefer going with nitrile gloves. So this here are the nitrile gloves. So you choose, nit uh, choose to wear nitrile gloves when you are when you're not dealing with uh, any wet bench or dealing with chemicals or, uh, or something external. When you are just doing a basic study, so you could always choose this just to prevent any sort of contamination that can go from you know the hand, your hands to the device. So you don't want any sort of oil or skin flakes which would just contaminate your device. Like you should always keep in mind we are talking about micro engineered devices or micro engineered sensors. So even while you fabricate these devices you should keep in mind that the dimensions of these devices are a few nano and micrometers and even a small amount of particulate contamination can hamper the working of your devices. So keeping all this in mind it is very you know important to follow these governing procedures as a fundamental need and then you can go ahead to um, understanding more about uh, the devices and uh, study more about how fabrication uh, can be uh, carried out. So now that I've now that I'm just demonstrating to you, let me wear the nitrile gloves. And even before I touch the gloves, what I am doing now is I have this set of face mask. As you can see, it has strings on both ends, and then a thin white strip here. 
so this comes on the top side and this at, at the bottom so the need for having this is there is a metallic strip so it bends according to so that fits rightly onto your nose so now I have my face mask make sure the face mask covers your entire mouth again you have to protect yourself from inhaling any sort of aerosols or airborne contaminants because we are talking about integrating biology with microengineered devices so when we are talking about studying cells and tissues you should always be aware that there could be aerosols which are uh, emanated from these uh, tissues or cell culture samples and again in, uh, in, uh, the, the advantage of having the face mask is twofold uh, protect yourself from these aerosols which is priority and on the second hand you don't want to contaminate the environment so even smallest cough or sneeze could contaminate the uh, air which is surrounding us so now that we've understood how stringent the governing procedure is uh, or has to be followed in order to maintain the environment in a class 1000 clean room after I have worn the face mask the next thing what I am doing is I have the hairnet here like you can see if you have a long hair always ensure you put it up and then you don't want any sort of dangling uh, earrings or makeup none of that sort should be allowed because even that the the could contaminate the environment so now that I have tied my hair I have the hair net which goes covering my complete hair and the head so now that you have seen I have a face mask and a hairnet what I would do next is use the gloves so now what happens is what if I just use the picked up the gloves and then wear my face mask so what happens is the gloves while you touch your skin or hair there could be contamination there could be oil or sweat which could contaminate your gloves and then when you're handling your devices with the same contaminated gloves that could hamper your uh, the, the characterization or the working of your device so finally what I do is wear the gloves after wearing my face mask and hairnet and then another thing what you have to observe is while you are wearing your gloves make sure this comes over your cuff of the sleeve so that it is completely covered if it is below and then your skin could be exposed and there could be penetration of chemicals or fluids which could enter through this so it is always followed that the glove would go just above the cuff of your the gown sleeve and this what I am wearing now is a simple nitrile glove like I mentioned if you are working on wet bench and you're, fa uh, and you're doing some sort of wet bench activity so you'll understand more about what wet bench is and what is it used for you would understand that you would be using chemicals like HF which is the most uh, uh, dangerous chemical the man has ever known and it could it could penetrate as through your skin and even into the bone so wet bench is that uh, you, you need to follow gowning procedure very stringently while you work in wet bench and then the type of gloves what you choose in wet bench is you wear the thick silicone or the mapa gloves so again there is a different set of classification for the type of gloves which has to be followed depending on your workstation 
So understand what is the type of work what you would be doing and what is the type of uh, uh, the type of you know the gloves or the equipment which you have to wear which would suit your work environment. Now that I have my gloves and the remaining thing, assume I would be working with light source which has high intensity. So assume there there's laser source and I'd be working uh, using that to do some sort of characterization. When you're it is uh, again it is important to understand that when high intensity light falls it could harm your skin or it could even um, damage your retina or your eyesight. Another important um, thing which has to be followed while you gown in clean room is wearing your uh, the glass, the glasses. So it's there on the other end of this bench. So let me go there and show you how those glasses have to be used in case you are dealing with uh, high intensity lights or wavelengths of lights which could affect uh, your eyesight. So following all this, let's see how the, uh, the, glass, the glasses could be wore and then you are ready for your workstation and then you can go on working safely so that you neither contaminate the environment as well as you, you, uh, you are protected. You are completely protected from any sort of you know, primary danger that could affect you. So now let's see the glassware which is on the other end. So here at this end are the glasswares which are just to protect your eyes while you are doing your while you are in your workstation so this is one such eye gear and then you can see there is another eye gear here again you have to choose the type of eye gear what you would be wearing and while after you work always make sure you don't touch the surface always ensure you hold it from the sides because your hands could be contaminated and it is not visible through your naked eyes so always ensure the practices which are clean and safe to you and as well as the next user who would be using these while he works here so now when you are just doing with high intensity lights you want to protect your eyes from all of that you could use these type of glasses and then when you are working at wet bench then maybe you don't want any sort of uh, uh, liquid which just flies and then it could sputter and then fall onto your eyes. In order to protect it completely from all sides you have an eye gear something like this. So make sure you have it properly fixed onto your eyes in case you have specs or you are using um, assistance then you, you could always wear your specs on top and then use these gears on top of your specs so that your vision is not hampered. So this was the entire gowning procedure which has to be followed in a proper sequence even before we go into fabricating our devices. Now just to get a clear picture in short let us see how this how uh, uh, we follow this entire procedure from the beginning again in a very quick note. Thank you.